Hello and welcome back. So I have now got the actual transfer register PCB. Now this belongs down here so I need to get this soldered up. Now, unfortunately if you see were I to actually put it down here it wouldn't quite fit so I'm not just soldering a strip of terminals in I've got to modify these backplane boards a bit. So these are the LHS and RHS inputs to the ALU. You don't normally get to see where the cables go. We shouldn't need this anymore. This is the lower half of the transfer register. So that's why at the moment all of our, the upper eight bits of our addresses are messed up. So this is the lower half and the upper half. And then when we copy it elsewhere, it should all be good. So that's the address bus main bus and that's memory data okay all right got what we need so i'm going to take all of this away and get set up for soldering okay i think i've collected up all the parts i need for this let's give it a go cleaning off a pcb before you solder it does make a noticeable difference to how smooth the process goes I actually use these uh, lens cleaning wipes. They come in quite big boxes, but they've got a lot of uses. Right, so these are the current limiting resistors for the red LEDs and these for the green control lines. These are the current register state. So from a bit of experimentation before, I've been using 1K ones for these. As long as you cap the uh, maximum current below what the device can handle, it kind of just comes down to aesthetic. Okay, now I'm going to bring the temperature up to 370. Gives me a little bit more strength to put the pins in. I only need two of these, so I'll get them out of the way. Okay, I'm going to take a little break now. Now, I think I want the bottom end of the T shaped towards ground, which is at that end. It is worth checking that before you uh, solder both sides, because that's when it suddenly gets difficult. Got this the wrong way around for easy testing. Right, we should be able to give that a bigger test now. That's good. Right, that 
is the LEDs and the resistors. I think it's better to add the chips next and do the remaining capacitors last. We've got a lot more varieties of chip on this board than any of the boards I've done before. So we're going to have to be very careful. GVs are a different size, the 157 and the 08s, so that's not too bad. This is identical profile to these ones there. I put the text here the wrong way up. Fortunately the little symbol here saves me from making a big mistake. Bad, but it's not perfect positioning. That's just as bad the other way. I don't seem to be able to focus as well as I used to. It's better I just had it a lot closer. All right, so I've got two 574 latch chips. Now I can put these away. Okay, let's get the hand gate in. felt too easy. So these are the HCT 157s, two of these for each half. Right, so now we've got six of these uh, 541 line drivers. Okay, well, in theory, it's just the decoupling caps now. I need more of these soon. Okay, in theory that's done. I need to give that a bit of a clean up and then we need to reassemble the CPU. Okay, so here's the completed board and if everything else has been done right, it should fit right there. Okay, that looks gorgeous. All right, I was clearing up the other day and I found this. This is the original little rough outline design I made. So, I put the transfer register at the top there. That's this whole section of the processor completed on PCB. This is the entirety of the register stack. Let's give this thing a test. Okay, so this is the original Hello World. Now we did have that problem where it just outputs the zero, which I thought was going to be a blank character, but uh, it's not. It's some weird character with horizontal lines. So let's get rid of that. 
um, that'll do it. And rather than just looping back, I want to give the transfer register a bit more of a test. This is a chunk of code I wrote a little while ago and haven't been able to fully try out. So this loads free into A and blanks out B, so we're acting like it's a 16-bit value, and then it shifts left by one. And then once it gets to the top, it shifts right by one until it's all the way back at the bottom. And then we'll loop back to the start of that loop. So that should show us all the bits working. Only just fits in the 256 bytes we're currently working on. Of course, the transfer register is what's going to uh, raise that limit dramatically. Okay, let's give it a test. Okay, so that's the move TL, comma the address of the string. Let's uh, move TH, comma zero. So the loading appears to work fine. So then let's uh, move A, comma E, which is going to initialize the LCD. I'm going to move a comma one, which is the clear, which isn't always necessary, but better safe. So we move TX into SI. No, nope, that was the clear, that's the move TX into SI. We're moving TL with the address of our initial little string copy loop. Move B comma 12, which is the number of characters in the string. And we're loading the first character from the address of SI when it gets up here. So there's our H. There's deck B. And there's the all important out for the LCD where we see the first character. So there's the H. Okay, I mean, yeah, this is all working. Okay, we've got the double O and a double L there. Don't know what caused that. But this is working. So we've done trickery like this before in A and B, but this is the first time we get to see it display in a 16-bit register. over here. And again, it did the double O and double L. Okay, I'll spare you the attempt at troubleshooting here. I spend about half an hour on it and basically just check that it's not anything really obvious that I've dislodged during the disassembly and reassembly. There's almost certainly going to be a bigger troubleshooting video um, coming out soon. Okay, I've seen a couple of minor instabilities here. There was that flashing bus line 
and we're seeing increments over here which we're not expecting. So I think I'm going to need to do a little bit of troubleshooting on this. But for today, I'm actually very pleased that the transfer register seems to be working correctly. Now, the next video was supposed to be working on memory to let us utilize the expanded address space we can access now. It might be a bit of troubleshooting, or I might just give an explanation for some simple thing I found in the meantime. But I'm always slightly nervous whenever I disassemble the build to the degree I've, I have done for this, because uh, you never know what kind of mistakes you might make. Okay, well, I hope you found this interesting, and um, thanks for watching. Goodbye.